morning. It's good to be with you today. This is Pastor Mercer with you this week for your daily devotions. Uh, we start here on August uh, 12th, and uh, this week as we will continue in, uh, the, in Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, his first letter there, to the Corinthians here, uh, this week we'll be talking about Paul is going to be hitting things that uh, were not only important and relevant to the church in Corinth who were dealing with, uh, uh, had come from lives of, of immorality. Uh, we know that there was the, the, the uh, in their pagan culture, the worship of the goddess in the temple. And uh, with that, there was lots of, uh, sexual immorality and those sorts of things. And Paul's going to talk about this today. And uh, these, I, I would, I think we can be honest with ourselves. Uh, you know, these, these can be kind of tough things for us to hear and to talk about. Uh, but we certainly see the application of this in our world today as well. So this week we'll be talking about that in uh, Paul's letter here. And uh, as uh, he talks about, uh, and Paul has some opinions here, as he says, uh, not commands from the Lord, but suggestions that he has uh, for living godly lives and within the body of Christ and um, uh, having to do with either, either being married or staying unmarried uh, and which is the best practice Paul has his own opinion about that, of course, um, but uh, at any rate, uh, there's, lots, there's lots to uncover and talk about this week, and we'll begin today with 1 Corinthians, uh, we'll be in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm for today is uh, the first five verses of Psalm 99. The Lord reigns, let the people trembles. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion, he is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name, holy is he. The king in his might loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God, worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Please now turn your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. We read, When one of you has a grievance against another, does he dare go to law before the unrighteous instead of the saints? Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Do you not know that we are to judge angels? How much more than matters pertaining to this life? So if you have such cases, why do you lay them before those who have no standing in the church? I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to settle the dispute between the brothers, but brother goes to law against brother and that before unbelievers? To have lawsuits at all with one another is already a defeat for you. Why not rather suffer wrong? Why not rather be defrauded? But you yourselves wrong and defraud even your own brothers. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, the, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. All things 
are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as, is it, for as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin is a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you are bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A couple of things. First of all, Paul, um, Paul is uh, admonishing them here uh, because of these foolish lawsuits that they're bringing up on, uh, to one another in the body of Christ. And so, and so instead of settling dis disputes among themselves within the church, what do they do? They take it outside and they go into a civil court, Paul is reminding them here, of unbelievers. Why would you do that? And can't, uh, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be better, he says here, to just suffer wrong and uh, so that we're not parading these kind of things in the church among uh, unbelievers? And then he goes on, he tells them, do you, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? And he goes on, and then Paul has this list here of, of sins, okay? And it's pretty extensive. He starts with the sexually immoral, the idolaters, adulterers, men who practice homosexuality. But he goes on, the thieves, the greedy, drunkards, revilers, swindlers, these all will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then Paul takes it and he says this, and he says, and such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Such were some of you, dear saints. Such were some of you and me, but we are now washed. We've been, we've been washed by the water, with the water with the word, and we have been made Christ. Uh, made his own through the waters of baptism. And it's, and it's in that that he continues to sanctify us. No, we will not be perfected in this life and we will still struggle with these sins even that Paul has listed here. But thanks be to God that you and I have been set free uh, and so we don't go make a regular practice of doing these things, but recognizing what God has delivered us from. And now by his spirit, we have been sanctified, we have been washed, we have been renewed and, and made one with the Lord Jesus Christ. So therefore, as Paul goes on here, this next section where he talks about, then we shouldn't be using our bodies uh, for sexual uh, sins. And this was a problem, as I said earlier, because in this culture, uh, because of the uh, because of the the goddess uh, in in the temple and uh, the the temple prostitutes and all of these other things that were that were taking place there, Paul reminds them why why would you he uh, asking them these questions. Why would you use your body to do these things when you are now enjoined to the body of Christ? So flee from these things. Do not practice these things. And he says, finally here, you are not your own, you, for you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. So we and the members, as members of the body of Christ, should not be using our members to sin. But to, in everything that we do, 
uh, in everything that we say that we should honor Christ, honor God with our bodies and uh, and and um, uh, the best of our abilities. But we know, dear saints, that there is grace in all of this too. That when we do when we do sin and when we stumble and when we fall, uh, we know that. We know that we live in Christ's forgiveness. You know, Paul, this list that he gives here in verses 9 through, uh, 9 through 10, again, it's pretty extensive. And when we look at that and we're honest with ourselves, no one escapes the condemn- condemnation of the law. We are all guilty under the law. We cannot keep the law. Uh, the law condemns and, con- con- uh, and accuses us. But it is in Christ, dear saints, it is, it is in Jesus Christ, crucified for you and me, that we have been set free, that, we've, that we have been set apart, we have been made his own, we have taken on the clothes of Christ, if you will, and now we are justified, justified just as if you and I had never sinned and enjoined to him in our baptism. Catechetical review today, I think uh, it's good to look at a couple of things. Uh, the sixth and eighth commandments come to mind here for me today because of, the, uh, because of the topics that Paul was dealing with here with the church. The sixth commandment, you shall not commit adultery. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we lead sexually a sexually pure and decent life and what we say and do and husband and wife love and honor each other. The eighth commandment. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation, but defend him, speak well of him, and explain everything in the kindest way. We pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, have a great day. I hope your week gets off to a good start. And uh, I'll see you again tomorrow.